Okay, uh, thank you um, for, to me for asking myself to speak. Um, thank you to Sanjay for letting me speak. <laughs> so Brigada syndrome, um, first described in, in, in 1992 and uh, correlated uh, to sudden unexplained death syndrome, um, which um, uh, is prevalent in Southeast Asia, going on a number of different names depending on which part of Southeast Asia you come from. And this is particularly important in terms of what I show you in terms of data later with our Southeastern, um, uh, Southeast Asian collaborators, uh, where it's a really important condition. Um, and as we know, it's adult male in sleep, uh, dying because of polymorphic VT and ventricular fibrillation with a higher burden of paroxysmal atrial fibrillation with characteristic ECGs that I'll show you in a minute. And in terms of the burden of sudden death, it may be responsible for in the UK, um, there's an estimated that 4% of sudden death may be due to Brogada syndrome. It's probably an overestimate. Um, it, it, it's a magic figure that came from a consensus document, so it, nobody has any evidence. Um, but it, it suggests two to 4,000 per annum. It's not insignificant, even if it is significant less, less than that. Um, and there's an estimated uh, incidence of five to 66 per 100,000 per annum. Um, and in one in a thousand uh, young men per annum in Laos, more common than uh, road traffic accidents as a cause of death in, in, in that particular Southeast Asian country. And we have a, uh, uh, a type 1 ECG pattern as a diagnostic ECG, while the type 2 and type 3 patterns may be a normal finding, particularly in the elevated right ventricular leads. And the azure provocation test um, is one of the best ways of unmasking the condition in a normal appearing ECG or in a type 2 or type 3 ECG, uh, and this is a, the, the, the classic Cove type 1 pattern appearing. Now, the diagnosis of Brigada syndrome uh, has recently been revised to the presence of that type 1 ECG pattern uh, in either a one lead of the standard or the high right ventricular leads, that's the fourth, third, and second intercostal spaces, um, V1 and V2, uh, either spontaneously or after administration of a drug like ashmaline, or the conversion of a type 2 or type 3 uh, pattern uh, with a medication. Now, I'm going to talk to you really about new data that we've got in relation to the pathophysiology of Brigada syndrome, um, and hopefully that you'll find interesting. There are two proposed uh, mechanisms, the repolarization uh, hypothesis and the depolarization hypothesis. Um, now, you'll look at this, uh, 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 this particular diagram. You have the right ventricular ECG over here. You have the epicardial um, electrogram over here. This is from an epicardial uh, myocyte uh, action potential, endocardial myocyte action potential. Um, and the concept is that you have a, um, a, a um, dispersion of um, repolarization uh, across the um, uh, transmural, across the right ventricular outflow tract in the setting of the repolarization um, uh, uh, theory, uh, with abbreviation in certain areas of the outflow tract, in particularly the epicardium, of the, um, of the uh, dome of the action potential resulting in this dispersion and producing uh, this pattern on the ECG. Uh, the alternative main theory is the depolarization theory that suggests that late activation, again in a heterogeneous uh, fashion, uh, will produce the same ECG pattern. And there's a third that tries to combine both aspects based on the embryological origin of the outflow tract. Now, the evidence for repolarization has been based upon the canine wedge model. Um, uh, that's a, a nasty thing done to dogs involving cutting out a, a wedge of the heart, doing strange things to it, and then proposing that it looks like a human syndrome. Um, you can tell I'm not a favor, I don't really favor that particular model. Um, there are also potentially mutations that may affect genes that uh, affect the transient output current and that would fit with that diagnosis, but they've only been found very rarely uh, and not in a setting of a familial segregation study. Um, and isoprenaline and quinidine therapy both block the ITO current um, or can affect the ITO current and, and may have um, uh, impacts on the um, uh, substrate as well as the severity of the substrate. Evidence for the um, conduction abnormality, uh, to my mind, is a little bit more extensive, and I'm sorry that I reveal my bias here, um, but there are common phenotypic features of conduction delay with late potentials and conduction disease, particularly with sodium channel disease, um, and there is also evidence of abnormal right ventricular alpha tract septal biopsies 
and also some data from an explanted perfused heart from a transplant candidate with evidence of fibrosis and myocardial fibro fatty infiltration and conduction abnormality uh, on physiological studies of this heart. And, and this is, these are some slides pointing that out. Um, there's data both from the Dutch group, uh, from Peter Bastima, and data from Pierre Lambiazzi from here in London, that both demonstrate endocardial conduction abnormalities. So you'll see the Brigada syndrome patients over here on the right-hand side with slowing of conduction, uh, blue late conduction over here compared to the control, and larger, wider potentials over the anterior right ventricular outflow tract compared to the control as well over here. And their data are very complementary from that point of view, uh, demonstrating this conduction delay phenotype. And the most recent data that Magdi was about to show you was data from the epicardium of the right ventricular outflow tract, that same area that we've just seen endocardially from Nadamane's group, Kaldami Nadamane, <coughs> based in Thailand and in LA, a great combination of places to work. Um, are seeing this evidence of late potentials, really fragmented, delayed, long-packed potentials um, on the epicardial surface with ablation, uh, reducing the presence of the type 1 ECG pattern and reducing the frequency of uh, shocks in these severely affected patients. Um, and that's the area that we're interested in. The outflow tract itself is embryologically different from other parts of the heart, uh, being derived from the second heart field. Uh, and there's also some evidence relating to connexin 43, the gap junction protein over here. You'll see um, CX43 here lining up with placagobin and merging uh, at the end of at the end plate of the uh, myocyte. And this is a nice, lovely picture, courtesy of uh, Severs and Rothery, demonstrating where the gap junctions are, uh, according to uh, in location to the rest of the myocyte, uh, and that it may be relevant to cellular migration. Um, in the right ventricular outflow tract such that knockout rats do not have much of an outflow tract uh, and that expression changes have been seen as well in myocardial diseases such as ARVC and sarcoidosis as well as in ischemic heart disease uh, that associate with, um, uh, with um, arrhythmic risk and arrhythmia and that's reduction in connexin 43 expression. So we've hypothesized that Brigada syndrome associates with fibrosis and altered gap junction expression in the outflow tract to explain that uh, the findings of conduction delay and that this substance substrate can be correlated with conduction delay in vivo and this is the data unpublished data that I'll present to you. Um, the study design was one of uh, taking uh, whole hearts, sudden death hearts from the uh, uh, St. George's Royal Brompton collection held by Mary Shepherd uh, where there was a familial diagnosis of Brigada syndrome um, uh, uh, made in one of our clinics um, at uh, St. George's or at Lewisham Hospital. Uh, the the family, familial evaluation process is probably very well uh, described already um, and involves uh, ensuring that the heart is completely normal in the relative and uh, that there is a normal ECG or an ECG suspicious of RV repolarization abnormality that then responds to an Ashmolene test to show a type 1 ECG pattern, and we followed up with investigation of MRI as, as part of our standard protocol and sodium channel mutation testing. This is the process that all these relatives went through um, for um, identifying a Brigada syndrome family, of which there was a whole heart of a sudden death victim, a SADS victim with normal uh, underlying histopathology and normal toxicology at death. Of all those, all those potential hearts, we could only identify six whole hearts that we could associate with these families. And these, this was our Brigada syndrome cohort. We then um, identified homograft valve donors, hearts, whole hearts, where the outflow tract was intact. Uh, and we were able to, uh, to match six um, age and sex match, because they were all male in the Brigada group and all relatively young. We had a number of all male and relatively older uh, ARVC patients that were used as, a, as, a, as an additional comparison um, who fulfilled anti-mortem and familial criteria, task force criteria for definite ARVC. These are the characteristics of the Regarda syndrome cases. Um, you'll see um, they're relatively young, dying mostly in sleep. Uh, relative, all normal uh, autopsies in the terms of not explaining a cause for sudden death. And we saw a number of relatives from each family and at least one or two or three relatives were found to be affected on this um, investigation protocol. 
And these are the ECGs that we saw in these family members. I would say to you that these are all convincing type 1 patterns to justify uh, making a, 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 an assumption that the sudden death victim died from Brugada syndrome. Uh, we have one sodium channel mutation carrying family. Out of the five we tested, one family declined. Um, so relatively in keeping with the prevalence of sodium channel mutations as we know it in Brugada syndrome. These are the controls, as I said, all males, similar ages, none of them cardiac related, normal, similar specialist cardiac autopsies. These are the ARVC group um, fulfilling ARVC criteria a bit older. Um, the post-mortem examination that all of these cases underwent was a standard specialist cardiac autopsy as undertaken by Mary um, using 20 sections in 10 blocks, including the conduction tissue. Um, they all underwent H&E and EVG stains. These are standard stains used diagnostically. In addition, we took some right ventricular and left ventricular samples and stained them for picrocerious red PSR, which really picks our collagen extremely well. Um, we then um, did a highly detailed dissection of the outflow tract using 14 parallel sections, three millimeters separated, up to 14 in each case. And they also went to H&E inspection, but PSR as well. And what we did was, um, or what um, uh, Harry Raju did, uh, because this is a hell of a lot of work, was to undertake morphometric collagen analysis. So these are the slices here, um, 267 sections uh, amounting to uh, that much square area of, uh, uh, of imaged myocardium, um, digitized and separated into zones, and in a semi-automated way and blinded to the diagnosis and wall of the chamber, underwent staining examination for collagen and also examination for fat. As it turned out, there was no difference at all between cases, controls, and ARVC um, for amounts of fat. Uh, and we looked at the proportion of the tissue, in, in proportion to the tissue area itself. This is just uh, evidence of some of our, our, our views of normal myocardium. Uh, you'll see that there is red staining, that is collagen, it's got a linear relationship parallel to the myocytes, uh, and there's also vascular collagen present there as well around, around vessels, and you'll see fat there normally anyway, as Mary's already said today. This is what we would see in some parts of the myocardium of the Brigada syndrome cases, and clearly it's more marked in the RVC cases. But we were seeing evidence of fibrosis, a uh, lot more pink, surrounding cardiomyocytes rather than just separating the bundles, um, and also fat cells intermixed with those. Um, and this, if picked up, uh, as evidently as it would have been on a normal staining, you would think was abnormal. Now, we then went on to quantify the collagen, and you'll see here we've got the outflow tract, we've got the right ventricular wall, we've got the left ventricular wall, and we've looked transmurally at the epicardium, at the mid wall, and the endocardium. But essentially, the main trend here, which was statistically significant, was that there was greater collagen content in the RVOT compared to the RV compared to the LV, but there was greatest in the ARVC, intermediate levels in the Brigada syndrome cases, and least in the control cases. If we looked at the, um, at the figures, and here on the left we have comparison to Brigada syndrome versus control and the RVC versus Brigada syndrome, there was, uh, in, in, a, in a multivariable analysis, there was a significant odds ratio for a Brigada syndrome being associated with um, uh, increased collagen and ARVC being greater than Brigada syndrome, uh, that the outflow tract uh, was um, more uh, abnormally affected uh, compared to the, um, uh, the endo and mid myocardium, uh, and compared to the other heart cardiac chambers, excuse me, uh, and the epicardium compared to the endocardium and the mid myocardium. We then also went to uh, stain uh, connexin 43. Um, uh, and this is, you can see the three sections here of the PSR stain uh, and the connexin 43 stain then uh, for quantification uh, afterwards. And we did, uh, we took a section of RVOT, one per each case um, uh, of ARVC, Brigada and control, and we stained them immunofluorescently for CX43, digitized them, three parallel strips from epi en epicardium to endocardium, uh, and in a semi-automated, blinded way again, uh, looked at the proportion of tissue area accounted for by connexin 43 stain uh, 
and we also corrected that for the non-collagenous content in case fibrosis was going to confuse matters or excess fibrosis was going to overestimate CX43 data. And uh, this is some, uh, uh, these are some views that we saw in controls of uh, lovely uh, end plates with perfect rings of green stained CX43, much reduced uh, punctate formation of the end plate in Brigada syndrome and even less expressed in, in ARVC. And this is data, ARVC has already been um, described in the past by, by other researchers. And we saw this uh, lower CX43 expression in ARVC, slightly greater in Brigada syndrome and slightly greater in controls. Um, and uh, on a, uh, on analysis, again, statistical analysis, uh, Brigada syndrome was more likely to have a lower expression of CX43 and ARVC more so than Brigada syndrome. Uh, and even when collected for, for uh, collagen. We weren't able to see much difference between, endo, between myocardial layers. And if we did a, a CX43 to collagen ratio to try and amplify that difference, you'll see that that trend is still maintained. Controls showing much more CX43 compared to levels of fibrosis. Now, all well and good showing that. What about the actual physiological um, consequences of that, the pathophysiological effects. Now, um, we were able to develop a collaboration with um, uh, Kulawi uh, Nabane, who I mentioned has a great work, has a great job. Um, but he was in Thailand and one of his colleagues in Japan as well contributed a case. And they had six cases of open heart surgery for epicardial ablation of, um, of, a, of Brigada syndrome in the outflow tract, as I've um, shown you. Um, already in the introduction to the, the lecture. Most of these were for uh, either excessive shocks or for the need for an extraction, a surgical extraction of ICD or both. And they were again relatively young. They were all male. Um, they were, generally had spontaneous type 1 ECG patterns. Um, and they underwent the ablation. There were a couple of sodium channel mutations. They underwent the uh, ablation and all did extremely well from the ablation of, abolition of the type 1 ECG pattern um, and uh, no recurrent VF cardiac events at, at these uh, lengths of follow-up, reasonable years and months. And this is an example of what was done. This is the uh, right ventricle and the outflow tract over here with a grid on it. And these are the electrograms. These are those, those uh, uh, readings from the epicardial surface. And if you look in particular, how, that we saw again that he saw, again, evidence of these abnormal potentials, delayed, fractionated, long, um, at the epicardial outflow tract. Um, and they then biopsied from that site. And then we stained the biopsies with PSR, and we saw one thing in particular that we hadn't noticed in ours, which was epicardial surface fibrosis. And we went back and looked at ours, and indeed we had that there as well. Um, and we also had this uh, infiltrative um, interstitial and focal replacement fibrosis that was very similar to what we had found in our cases. So w w this is the substrate was then ablated. And these are the ECG changes from his cases. And I'm very, very kind of him to let you use his slides. Uh, Pre-ablation with the clear Brigada pattern. Post-ablation, the uh, J-point elevation particularly lost and then ablation, uh, then a post-ablation, ashmaline provocation, not able to reproduce the same uh, ECG pattern, but still this, this ST elevation injury pattern, which you sometimes see after this ablation in the initial phases. So in, in conclusion, um, increased collagen, uh, if this will move, is present in the outflow tract more than the right ventricle and more than in the left ventricle, um, and more in the epicardium than the endocardium and the midmyocardium and more in ARVC than in Brigada syndrome than in control. Um, the Brigada syndrome itself has an increase in collagen content and fibrosis that's greatest in the outflow tract, but all myocardial walls are affected, and there is a specifically reduced gap junction expression in the outflow tract itself. And this leads us to propose that Brigada syndrome may be a generalized disease of myocardial architecture, myocyte electrical coupling, and a predilection for severity to be greatest in the outflow tract because of the nature of the outflow tract, um, and that there's in vivo evidence in Brigada syndrome of epicardial conduction delay that correlates with the same interstitial and focal fibrosis that we see in uh, sudden death cases, 
and that ablation abolishes the type 1 pattern and abolishes ventricular fibrillation by treating the underlying substrate. And this is the strongest data yet to support the depolarization hypothesis of the cause of Brigada syndrome. Um, thank you for, um, for your attention and acknowledgments to all the people who have been involved in this sort of research. Thank you very much.